This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this brushed steel texture using GIMP. So I'll go ahead and get started here in GIMP. By the way, if you'd like to know how you could update GIMP with these new icons and this different appearance, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So the first thing I want to do is open up a new document. So I'll go to File and click New, and I'm going to set the document size to 1920 by 1080. Go ahead and click OK. You know what, let's go to Advanced Options and let's make sure we have uh, Fill With uh, Transparency. We'll just start out with Transparency for now. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to hold Control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out of this a little bit. And as you can see, we have a fresh slate here. Uh, what I want to do is I want to fill this all in with black first. And if you notice here, I have black set as the foreground color and white as the background. That is the default in GIMP, I believe. So uh, if you're just opening up GIMP, this should be how yours is configured as well. If not, then go ahead and just click on this and, and make this black. Now we'll go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color, so that it creates this layer with all black fill inside of it. And what we'll do next is we'll go to Filters, uh, Noise, and HSV Noise. And we want to choose uh, down here where it says Holdness, we want that set to 1. Where it says hue, we want this all the way up, and saturation and value, we want those all the way to the right as well. So this gets slid all the way to the left, and these get all the way to the right. Go ahead and click OK, and it's going to create this static noise on the uh, on the canvas here. And what we're going to do next is blur this. So we'll go to filters, blur, and choose motion blur. And the presets that we want here are going to be we want to choose radial. We want to choose uh, down here where it says angle, set that to 38, and that should be enough right there. Then go ahead and click OK and give it a minute or two to do its thing. As you know, as you can see down here in the bottom, it takes a little bit for it to complete. Okay, so as you can see, it finished processing the, uh, the radial motion blur. The next step we want to do is create a new layer on top of this. So I'm going to click on the button right here that says create a new layer and add it to the image. And we'll use transparency. Go ahead and click OK. And I want to grab the uh, gradient tool, or the blend tool rather, which is right here. Keyboard shortcut is the letter L on the keyboard. And where it says gradient, I'm going to click this icon right here. We want to look for the preset that says three bars, which is right here. It kind of looks like this gradient of black, white, black, white, black, white. It should be down towards the bottom. There it is right there, three bars. And for the shape, we want to choose conical. Conical symmetrical, S-Y-M right there. And once we've done that, I'm going to bring the cursor towards the center of the page right here, right where the center point is. And then I'll just click and drag out to the left like this to create this sort of gradient going over the image. And what I'll do next is I'll go up here where it says Mode and I will set that to Overlay. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on the background layer down here and I'll go to Colors, Curves. And with the Curves menu, I want to take the top, this point at the top right and just slide this to the left a little bit to lighten up the shade of this steel. Maybe something like that. That's pretty good. Uh, I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And what I want to do now is, if you notice, there's a little bit of like coloration inside of these ridges of the uh, brushed steel. So I want to get rid of that by going to Colors, uh, Desaturate, and I'll just go ahead and click OK and that should get rid of that. And another step we want to do is we want to add like a hint of blue to this image. If you notice here in the thumbnail, it's like a hint of blue to really help reinforce that steel look. So to do that, I'm going to create a layer. Let me click on this top gradient layer, and then I'll click Create a New Layer and add it to the image to create a new layer on top of that. Go ahead and click OK. And I want to change the foreground color from black to I have this shade right here that I previously used. You might want to type in this notation, D-A-E-B-F-F. -F. That's the color code for this color. If not, just choose a, a shade of light blue like you see here, and go ahead and click OK. And then we'll go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And then we'll change the Blend Mode to uh, Burn. And I'll take the opacity of that and bring that down a little bit, maybe about that much. We don't want too much, too much blue in there. And I'd say that looks pretty good right there. And one final step would be to maybe lighten up these ridges a bit. So let me click on the, uh, the background image, and I'll go to Colors, Levels. And I'll take this middle node and slide that to the left a little bit like that. Go ahead and click OK. I, you know what, you could even try sliding this one to the right a little bit. That's pretty good right there. Or you know what, I kind of liked it better over there. 
Or you can just play with it a little bit, see what you think looks best, and go ahead and click OK. And if you want, you could even go back to this blue layer and turn that up some more, see if that looks any better, and I think it does. So, But that pretty much does it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating um, a brushed steel texture using GIMP. And if you'd like to finalize this so that you can actually use it elsewhere, what you could do is just right-click on this top layer and go to New from Visible, and you'll have a brand new layer right there that you can work with. You can export it as a PNG or a JPG and, and use it however you'd like. So that's how you can do that with GIMP. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.